Hello, this is Telecom TV. We are reporting from Mobile World Congress 2016 here in Barcelona in Spain. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Eric Creviston, who is President of Mobile Products at Quovo, and with Todd Gillenwater, who is CTO and Vice President Engineering Mobile Products at Quovo. Okay then, Eric, let's get into it. I'm going to ask you the first question. It's a new year. Another new year, uh, obviously going to be a busy one, an exciting one for, for comms in general and mobile. In particular, there's been a lot of talk about um, new technologies like carrier aggregation being adopted. Tell us something about that. First of all, what is carrier aggregation? Why would it be adopted now rather than earlier? Is it something that's so new it couldn't have been done before? And there's a key trend you're seeing in the industry at the moment from Corvo's point of view. Sure. So. First of all, it's about responding to the tremendous growth in demand for mobile data. Uh, applications continue to come up, which demand more and more data, faster pace, lower latency. Uh, video streaming is becoming very popular now, and not just from one source to many people, like all of us going to YouTube, but now a lot of us are generating video and uploading it and sending it to various places. Apps like Periscope, for example, are uh, very taxing on the mobile infrastructure, as you can imagine. So, uh, so as we're at one time racing to add the next billion users to LTE, we're actually trying to deliver better service and more uh, continuous service to all the users that are currently on LTE. And carry aggregation is a great way to do that. It basically lets the phone or the handset work on multiple frequencies at the same time. So the carriers are being aggregated, put together in the phone, and you can get higher and higher download speeds and eventually even upload will work on carry aggregation as well. Thank you. Are there any other trends that you're particularly noticing or that Colvo is particularly involved in? One of the other key trends is uh, a move towards fewer SKUs or fewer model numbers from our customers. Uh, the handsets are very complex to develop. They cost a lot of money, take a lot of time, and you need to release as few models as possible and have it cover as much of the world as possible. And what that means is you put a lot more frequency bands in each phone. So the RF section of the phone is getting very complicated, adding a lot of bands. And when you add carrier aggregation on top of that, it becomes incredibly, incredibly complex for the customers to get these products to market. Because poor old RF is very much a Cinderella these days. You can't do anything without it. <laughs> Working away there in the background, it doesn't usually get much direct attention, does it? But it's enormously important. Yes, yeah, so I think year over year, you continue to see an increase of attention on RF because of this complexity that's being built in and the fact that we are enabling so many new business models by enabling apps that have the video transfer and so forth. And so our, our job is to make it stay Cinderella, right? And, uh, and continue uh, to be the pretty girl at the ball. And so we're making it easier for customers to do this. We're uh, integrating at higher levels into our modules so our customers can get to market faster. Corvo have a particular range of expertise in this new carrier aggregation technology? Yes, uh, one of the uh, key technologies to allow it uh, is called multiplexing, where you can take the signals from multiple antennas, basically, and take them through multiple filters and get them to the, the receive or transmit section appropriately without going through switching networks so they're lower loss and higher performance. That really helps enable high-performance multi-carrier carry aggregation. We've covered the sort of notion of what the, the challenges are. Are there any others apart from that? You've talked about Corvo's expertise and then what you can do in carrier aggregation. What's happening in the wider mobile industry itself? What are the challenges that you hear about more than anything else? It's interesting to see a lot of people go into metal cases in their phones now. It used to be kind of a high tier phone mm -hmm. uh, feature. Mm -hmm. Now it's going through a lot of the different parts of the portfolio. And when you're in the RF industry, metal is, is very hard to deal with, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So when the entire phone is cased in metal, uh, it creates a lot of opportunities for us to help solve those challenges and tune as uh, multiple tuning on the antennas for example uh, is one way to help deal with that that application we have expertise in that area as well anything else that people come to you with and say I'd really like it if you could do this for us or it's, it's power consumption is always very high on the list <laughs> yeah. that hasn't changed right and so Todd and, and his team are developing a lot of very specialized technologies to uh, to work on power consumption in the phone while dealing with all this complexity Todd, you've been sat there patiently, but it is your turn now. You are going to get a question. What, Todd, are the key underlying technologies that is critical to new handsets being launched or developed today? You talk a bit about Colvo's technology portfolio and how it supports customer requirements. Sure. Uh, carry aggregation and uh, all the band proliferation is driving a lot of new technology needs in the front ends and new capabilities, you know, starting with power. You, you talked briefly about power a, a few minutes ago, but uh, power consumption is very important. So we're seeing yet another 
uh, evolution to envelope tracking. Envelope tracking, I think, has been the buzzword the last few years at this at this uh, conference. Uh, but even this year, we're seeing the bandwidth envelope tracker being required to go up uh, 2x, and that way we can do two carrier uplink carrier aggregation. So I think Eric mentioned before about doing multi-carrier downlink. When we're talking about receiving many signals, uh, we're preparing for uplink carrier aggregation, where the where the mobile handset will be transmitting two carriers uplink uh, here in the near future. In addition to that, uh, the, uh, one of the big areas that carrier aggregation is driving is uh, filters, uh, the need for filters, higher Q in our filters, higher bandwidth. So we're seeing a big increase for ball filters. I think Eric mentioned multiplexers, uh, but we're seeing the, even the capabilities of the ball filters being stretched. So we're having to go back and improve Q in, in our ball filters. And I think uh, we'll start to see some of our new filter technologies hit the market middle of this year to where we'll see very high Q ball filters in the market to help enable some of these mul multiplexers going forward. And um, so as we look further into uh, the front ends, uh, the, the front ends getting more complex uh, with all the different bands in them. So it requires uh, many uh, high orders of switches. Uh, so again, it goes back to power consumption by reducing the loss in the switches, the parasitics in the switches. But one other new requirement is on us, again, because our carrier aggregation is linearity. Uh, we uh, have to drastically improve our linearity or we're going to interfere with some of these signals we're trying to receive on the downlink. I know it's pretty technical. No, that's <laughs> absolutely fine. The audience will understand. So, so why is it linearity? Why is it so utterly critical? Linearity is very important. Uh, whenever you receive a signal, you do not want to, uh, when you uh, jam yourself on the downlink. So you have a, uh, an intermod product between the transmitter and the receiver and you do not want to have that intermod product fall into the receive band until you literally jam yourself. So that's, that's the reason why you need a very linear switch. Yeah, so okay. and, and not only the switches but also in the tuners, the antenna tuners. But the, the linearity of the systems uh, are drastically improved or requirements are drastically going up. You're obviously mapping and reacting to these changes in the market as things go along. What about your customers themselves? Do they come to you and say, we really need this? Or do they know what they want? Or is it more of, look, the, the situation is getting so complex now, we, you have to, we have to change, we have to do this and the other? It's changing. I, uh, we used to wait for our customers to come tell us what we needed and what we needed to do. Uh, but today we are working with uh, the carriers themselves as well as the standards bodies. Uh, we have a lot of interac inter direct interaction with the standards bodies. Uh, so we're bringing complete solutions to our, to our handset, OEM type of, of uh, customers. So uh, no, I think we're starting to see more and more where the, uh, the component supplier is presenting solutions to the handset suppliers. I really uh, I noticed that today in one of the meetings we were having with some people that used to come to us and present us with block diagrams and tell us the parts they want us to do. Uh, in the meeting today, we were up showing all the block diagrams and telling them how they were all going to work, and uh, the roles have just changed, right? Yeah, um, we're taking more of the leadership in the overall architecture, I think. Let's move on. I'm going to stick with you, Todd, if I could briefly, but we're both, both going to answer this one anyway, but let's look at 5G briefly. <coughs> a huge amount of hype about it and a lot of discussion of whether 5G is really 5G. We'll, we'll put all that to one side, but there's a lot of talk and hype in the industry about it. What, as far as you are concerned, are the key aspects of 5G that differentiate it from 4G and LTE, and how is Quovo engaged with the 5G effort? I know it's a, a long road to it, but... From the technology side, uh, we're seeing a, you know, a, a big portion of 5G is going to be in the millimeter wave, and, uh, and that's where we're starting to see a lot of interest in our gallium nitride portfolio, especially for the base station infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, we have some demonstration projects ongoing with uh, some base station operators today. Uh, so, uh, so we are shipping uh, quite a bit of, uh, I would say, prototypes into this uh, new base station infrastructure for some of the millimeter wave frequencies. Uh, we also have some work ongoing. There, there's two phases. One's a higher frequency and millimeter wave phase uh, above six gigahertz. And then we're starting some other work where it's below six gigahertz that I think you'll see in the market uh, earlier. And that's going to be using a lot of our existing mobile technologies uh, today. Not so much uh, the, uh, any, any new technologies, but a lot of the technologies that we already currently have in place. Uh, we might need to do some new uh, filter designs, but, but nothing that we see is a, that should really delay the rollout of 5G. 
So it's an evolutionary process as before? Yes, very much. Okay. Tell us your side of it. Yeah, so what is 5G, right? I, I, that's uh, a lot of what we're here to talk about this week. In fact, we, we announced uh, this morning, we had a press release about uh, uh, joining 3GPP to help contribute to the definition of 5G. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we know a few things. I mean, the industry has set out a few uh, milestones or benchmarks, what they'd like to do. Most people just think of it as more data, right? More data faster, getting to 10 gigabits and uh, having a thousand times more capacity in the networks. Those are great, great goals. They kind of further the reach of 4G. But there's two other things that 5G should enable. Um, one is a low latency, high reliability communication. Things like autonomous driving, of course, really would require that and many other applications. But the other one is uh, what's being termed massive machine type communications. And this is a, a very different type of uh, RF connection for us. And it's very low power, it could be very low data in some cases. Um, and it helps enable really tens of billions of nodes of, of Internet of Things sort of applications over the standardized 5G kind of global network. So as opposed to the short range wireless solutions to IoT, this could be a global sort of solution. I know we're real excited about the opportunities there. Right, I'm staying with you, Eric, because that was a good answer. Let's okay. see if you can carry on with it. Um, what, we're here at Mobile World Congress 2016 in Barcelona. What announcements are you making at the show? What's Quavo bringing to the party? So I mentioned already we joined 3GPP to, to work on 5G definition. Yeah. Uh, and you won't be surprised by the product releases. They're very consistent with what we've talked about so far. So <laughs> we're, we're releasing new, new members of the families of RF Fusion and RF Flex that we've talked about before. I remember it, them well. In both cases are really helping to drive that complexity down in the handset. So integrating at a higher level, higher performance, new technologies. And we're announcing not only new products, but a lot of new design wins and production ramps to really show that Corvo's on the map. We're, we're gaining a lot of traction and helping solve a lot of customer problems. What are you looking forward to seeing at uh, this year's show? Well, I'm out looking for 5G, you know, the new applications, ideas, what 5G really is. Uh, I think uh, the industry is still trying to define what 5G means, sure. to, means to us, means to uh, everybody that's going to use it. So I'm out uh, trying to understand what it could be in the, in the future. Well, if you spend any time at the show this year, you hear two words, virtual reality, over and over and over. Sorry. So uh, I've been in conference rooms so far just talking to customers and hearing these stories. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting on the floor and actually seeing some demos. Well, there's a submarine. There's a racetrack. There's Is lots and lots. Yeah, all sorts really? of things. Is it's everybody wearing the, everybody's wearing the goggles. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's good. It must be compelling because everybody's talking it about be. it. Right. Yes. Well, gentlemen. I can't believe it's a year since we last did this. You've been as entertaining and informative as you were a year ago. So, Eric Creviston, thank you very much indeed. And of course, you too, Todd Gillenwater. Thank you. Thank you.